Welcome back. The Foreign Secretary has reiterated the Tories will never negotiate Gibraltar's sovereignty against its people's wishes. William Hague was speaking at the Conservative Party conference last week. It's in our national interest. And so is sticking up for British nationals around the world and for Britain's overseas territories, another part of the job of the Foreign Office. You would think that that was obvious. Later today, I will be proud to speak alongside the Chief Minister of Gibraltar. But the last Labour government was prepared to negotiate away British sovereignty over Gibraltar against its people's wishes. This government will never do that. William Hague also addressed a Gibraltar government reception attended by members of Spain's Partido Popular. On sovereignty, he made reference to Peter Haynes' recent comments on shared sovereignty, saying he's a very slow learner. He said it hasn't been an easy year for Gibraltar, reiterating Britain's view that the frontier controls implemented by Spain this summer have been disproportionate, unlawful under EU law and quite obviously politically motivated. Mr Haig echoed David Cameron's National Day message, saying Gibraltarians have faced these challenges with enormous dignity. He said Gibraltar has earned its self-confidence by virtue of its successful economy with low unemployment figures. The Foreign Secretary said the relationship between the Foreign Office and Gibraltar is the best it's been in a long while, adding that hundreds of British diplomats have been defending Gibraltar in every corner of the globe this summer, most recently at the United Nations last week. While reaffirming his commitments to a diplomatic solution, William Hague repeated that under the Conservatives, Britain will take whatever action is necessary to safeguard Gibraltar, its people and its economy. A team of lawyers has been put together by the Gibraltar government to look at whether it can file a complaint against Spain for incitement to hatred. Number 6 Convent Place says it will leave no stone unturned to expose those responsible for illegal campaign against Gibraltar. Meanwhile, MEP Sir Graham Watson has written to the European Commission to demand a similar investigation. Last week, a video shot at a school play and posted on YouTube shocked the world. Not just because of the content, which showed Spanish military agents shooting Gibraltarians, but also because of the right-wing mentality which propagated that very image. Add to this the burnt Gibraltarian cars across the border and the insults and abuse hurled at Gibraltarians, and the government has concluded that a climate of hatred has been generated by Spanish politicians and their spin doctors. Number six says these reactions are the responsibility of the Spanish government because of the statements they make publicly. Deputy Chief Minister Joseph Garcia says the Spanish state is obliged by international conventions to investigate incidents of hate speech and hate crime. Dr. Garcia says media articles and comments by Spanish politicians, as well as commentators and officials over the last few weeks, are being scrutinized by a government team of lawyers. They're hoping to put together a portfolio of specific instances of incitement to hatred. Meanwhile, the Gibraltar and Southwest MEP Sir Graham Watson has written to the European Commission asking them to investigate whether the controversial YouTube video constitutes incitement to hatred. Sir Graham says the play is not only tasteless, but believes it's even more so repulsive because it involves children. Well, the European Union has in the treaties an obligation to act to stop things like this which will drive countries apart. And I want to see Commissioner Reding called in uh, to look at what is going on, not just on this incident, but on the incident of the many Gibraltar, Gibraltar people who've had their cars vandalized or torched, people who've had their holiday homes in Spain uh, spray-painted or graffitied and so on. The video was taken down from YouTube over the weekend, and according to the Daily Telegraph, the owner has apologized for the content, saying it wasn't intended to cause political controversy or offense. The Dr. Heraldi Home Inquiry began this week with a number of witnesses already having given evidence. The inquiry will look into allegations of mismanagement, misconduct and malpractice, including abuse as well as the response these had from the relevant authorities and agencies. The chairman of the inquiry, Sir Jonathan Parker, emphasized that its aim was inquisitorial, not adversarial, on its first day.
which was attended by around 20 lawyers. An application by David Enright, representing former Dr. Hiraldi home manager Joanna Hernandez, that she be allowed to make an opening statement, was refused. However, on the following day, Sir Jonathan Parker said it was an extremely serious and regrettable development that the opening statement was subsequently published on Facebook. The inquiry heard from current care agency team leader at the home, Carlos Banderas, who said his impression was that its overall condition had improved over time. The next to take the stand was Ms. Hernandez, whose whistleblowing and subsequent successful industrial tribunal for unfair dismissal arguably led to the establishment of the inquiry. She said she never expected what she was going to find when she first became manager and made a number of allegations, including the claim that she had found a punishment room for residents at the home when she first arrived. Evidence was also heard from former staff members as well as family members of residents, responding to questions by lead counsel Robert Engelhart QC. The mother and grandmother of one former child resident said the carers used to shower him with cold water when he was behaving badly at the home during the early 2000s. The father of another resident spoke of having seen his son slapped by a carer, who was subsequently dismissed. One family member said there was never any handing over of any documentation from manager to manager, and said that when Ms. Hernandez left, the modern concepts that she was trying to bring in left with her. However, all spoke well of the current team leader, Carlos Banderas, with the same family members saying he is very sensitive to carers' concerns. The inquiry will resume on Monday and will continue to hear evidence over the next three weeks. Now, Ms. Gibraltar Maruak Harbush has thanked everyone who voted for her and got her into the final six of the Miss World pageant. Maruak won the People's Choice, which saw her rocketed to the finals, where she joined the top five. She arrived earlier this week and was received at the Gibraltar Air Terminal by the Minister for Culture and the Mayor, as well as family and friends. Thousands in Gibraltar were glued to their TV screens on Saturday afternoon as a buzz of expectation had been created on social media when Marwa Karbouche had made top spot on the People's Choice section of the pageant. There was even more excitement when she joined the final five on stage for the last few moments of the show. In the end, it was the Philippines, France and Ghana, in that order, who made the top spots. But few will ever forget the image of her holding hands with Miss Spain, a scene of irony for some and hope for others. As part of a video montage on the day, prepared in expectation of her making the final six, Marwa said her parents had been the biggest influence in her life. She said being part of the pageant wasn't just about having nice hair or nice clothes, it was about getting down on your hands and knees and working hard for things which change people's lives. Beauty from within and kindness are the things that change people's lives. And I truly believe that kindness is the language that the deaf can hear and the blind can see. Thank you. Well done, Gibraltar. I think she proved clearly why she is the people's choice. This morning at the air terminal, Mara was greeted by a special welcoming committee, including the Minister for Culture, the Mayor, and all her friends and family who had worked so hard for her to get to the top. Well, it's great. I mean, she's done us really proud in, in the position she came. Uh, I think it's very, very important for Gibraltar that she actually made the show. She was there. The whole world was watching her. And what was, was really, really good, the way she came out with Miss Spain. I think that is a very, very important for Gibraltar. Well, it's, it's, it's wonderful. I mean, the whole of Gibraltar is delighted. I think she has done us proud, and I think as we all expected. And it's, it's absolutely wonderful that you know, a town the size of Gibraltar very nearly made it again to the Miss World. And I think we're all over the moon about it. I wish her every success. Uh, it's very exciting and I was really proud. And, and is it nice to have her back home? Yes. I haven't seen her for a long time and I'm really happy to see her again. It's a long time. Marwa said she'd been so grateful for everyone who had voted for her and felt so special to have the whole of Gibraltar supporting her from home. 
She said she was glad to be back on the rock after such an intense month, which will remain in her memory forever. Also this week, Sir Mark Howard Potter was sworn in as Justice of Appeal. The defenders of Gibraltar announced a new cross-border pressure group called Human Dignity. And the Gibraltar Football Association announced a series of friendlies, the first of which will see the Estonian national team visit in March. For the rest of this week's news, you can head over to our website, gbc.gi forward slash news. Don't forget to tune in to Radio Gibraltar and GBC Television throughout the week for the very latest local news. You can also follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Thank you very much for watching. Good night.